Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. This week brought to you by ExpressVPN, Calm, and Mercari. I'm Gus. Oh, I'm Gavin. I'm Jessica. I'm Andrew. And I'm still Gus. How's everyone doing? I feel like we had a, a, a weird start today. We like we normally have a very regimented schedule, like around here when we work on stuff. Yeah. And we did something out of order today. We filmed earlier today. You did the podcast this morning? No, no, we did the other thing that we, <laughs> uh, that we work we on. Shot, we shot a sh- core shot a sh- uh, short today, and it was a kind of a bizarre short. Where we needed to get really close and uh, sensual with each other. I think so it, didn't it this was, one the idea for this one started off almost as a joke, and then we were like, yep. "Oh, that's good. You should write that." Yes. Yeah. And now, like, we had to film it. Yes, and it was written, and we filmed it today. So. Exactly. Yeah, I was like, hey, "Wouldn't it be funny if like we kissed each other?" And then it was just like, uh, oh, did, <laughs> "Did everyone make out today?" <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, that's uh, close, close as probably we'll it. get without like signaling any HR flags, probably. <laughs> yeah. uh, they probably should have been signaled. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking when, before, you know, as we were filming, we, you know, pe- you know, we were, I forget who it was, someone, maybe it was Blaine, was looking on Reddit. Maybe it was John, actually, I think. And he was like, what qualifies as not safe for work here? Oh, like, God. What's, what's something that you couldn't click on or that you couldn't watch? Like here at Rooster Teeth. Snuff right. film? <laughs> yeah, probably, Snuff. probably not that. <laughs> but, but I've seen like, Car accident videos where someone probably died. You've also sent yeah. me a ton of snuff. I have. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Jesus oh, wow. Christ! You digitizing? <laughs> you digitizing your faces of death VHS tapes to and sending them to? Gus, that was before HR existed. It was. Yeah, there were only like six of us working at the time. Whenever someone new started, I would send them all the shocking videos I could to try to desensitize them. He would uh-huh. set my desktop background to just the worst stuff. I fell off a stool once. <laughs> In the kitchen, I didn't have a desk. I worked at the kitchen. It was bar. in the beautiful apartment. Yeah, and I was <laughs> just logged back in. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got to make sure that people know what they're what they were in for. I feel like people that start off working at Rooster Teeth young lose their innocence earlier than than maybe others do. Mm-hmm. How guys? old were you when when that happened? That specific incident, Gavin, when you fell off the stool. Eighteen. <laughs> there yeah. you go. See, I don't know just if I saw those wire. things at eighteen. <laughs> I was nervous for a second. <laughs> <laughs> that would have really been 2006 or seven. 18, 19. Okay, good. You're good. Yeah, I'm set. Yeah. I'm fine. <laughs> there, there's no criminal activity here. Yeah. <laughs> and the statute of limitations has uh, run out. On long as yeah. Thank God for the statute of limitations. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. we had that conversation, and then I think it was Mariel sends us a video <laughs> or shows us a video of a woman running naked toward a camera. And then jumps up and just like opens up her legs and you see full vagina and then it goes into the whole like death stranding. What is it? The, the baby. The baby. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So wait, so, she like j- jumped at she's the naked. lens? Like with, with a yes. growler? Oh yeah, she's naked and she just runs towards the lens, and jumps up, opens a, up like, her legs and you see full vagina and then once it completely like <laughs> it go, goes to black, then it goes into yeah. the baby scene of. Hmm. So. You can only imagine. You should imagine It's an imagine Oscar it. contender this year. What? Yeah, it's an Oscar contender this year. It's, <laughs> can we uh, play it? Is. Can we just yeah, let's play just, it now? Huh. Yeah, if you can find that. Eric? No. Oh. no? <laughs> I oh, okay. think I heard a very confused <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So we can watch it, but we can't show it. <laughs> okay. I mean, we can show it and cut it out of YouTube. <laughs> no. Why? <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't know if that's soundboard or if that's real Eric. That could be either. <laughs> it really could go either way. Clip it. Uh, Raise your hand if the, in the chat if you want to see that woman <laughs> hug the camera with they her They can go bar. find it themselves <laughs> but and that, leave this on yeah, in the I other window. Yeah, but you just want to watch it. Maybe you just take a moment right here, right now, just watch it. it I think it's only like 10 seconds. Uh, so if you need to do that for yourself right now, please do. I'm see, good. See. All right. He doesn't want to watch it. He makes. He wants to make me show it to everyone. Hey, I'm, I'm actually going to look away. <laughs> <laughs> do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, I must have this. I know we talk about this regularly. I must have the strangest Google search because history because I just looked up naked woman jumps on a camera um, Ooh, Yep, but earlier I was having a conversation with Anna and uh, mm-hmm. we, were, we were standing over Hi, here. We were Anna. talking we we're talking about Howard Hughes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were talking specifically about how uh, you know towards the end of his life that uh, he had like compulsive hoarding and that you know he would hoard uh, jars of urine and feces and fingernail clippings, right? And, just like yeah. all kinds of unusual stuff. Oh. So then we, I started trying to figure out what percentage of people do that. So I started trying to Google search like percentage of people who save their urine, and you get like weird, and like I couldn't find the answer, but I got weird like, is it safe to drink your partner's urine? I was like, nope, that's not what I'm looking for. 
Oh. You know, all these like weird yeah. ancillary questions. And, and did answers. you find anything? I couldn't find it. Isn't there that doctor in India who prescribes people his piss to make them better? What? Or does he drink his own piss? Does to make other people better? Yeah. No, well, I read, actually, we just discussed this on Always Open last week that because Mario came back from Europe with dysentery and how there is such a thing that doctors will put other, when you were on that too, you were on always, the yeah, doctor will I, put other people's poop inside uh, of your own. Oh, yeah, like a fecal See, I didn't, I didn't know about that, so this piss thing, you could be honest, something. There. Yeah, but I don't think piss should go in a mouth. No. Just ever. Yeah, poop, poop. Going into the butt drawing, makes sense. <laughs> drawing a hard line. Just like I, for one, think that's my platform. Platform, <laughs> pee out of mouths. Hey, you can yeah. put other pee out of mouth. No phrasing, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it. we've already made the bumper stickers. It's going out like that. It's too late. Look, I'm, I'm happy to get someone else's piss put in my bladder if it you, needed to be, but not in my mouth. How much to have someone else's piss put in your bladder? What do you mean, how much? You just said you're happy to have it done. I think if it was I like a it. medical issue. Uh, what you yeah. mean, like how much for us to do it right now? Who's, yeah. Hey, uh, who's piss? I'll, I'll pee. I'll pee in your bladder. <laughs> 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 I, I would do that for for a hundred grand. Uh, okay. Man, medical care has gotten outrageous in Pretty this country. Steep. Isn't someone going to do something about this? All right, let's crowdfund a hundred grand so I can pee into you. <laughs> we'll figure out the logistics <laughs> later. <laughs> I, I doubt that it's into. It's there's probably some intermediary device. I mean, I'm sure you would have a tube of some kind. Yeah, you wouldn't have to do surgery. You could just we could just do a catheter, maybe push it far enough up. Jesus, holy yeah. hell! That doesn't. We could dock. Oh, I don't think we need to. I even just learned what that word was here. Moment. <laughs> no singing. Oh, right. Sorry. You know, and I learned all these things. Like he just said, docking. I did. I just learned what that was this past year. Learned it from here, Rooster Teeth. I mean, if you if <laughs> so, you were around earlier, you would have come back to your desktop background and learned about it, probably. Probably, huh? Well, How'd you learn? You learned about that at Rooster Teeth. I did. We were on set a couple weeks ago, and somebody were, they were making jokes about docking. And of course, the first thing that I think of is like Armageddon when they're trying to dock at the International Space Station up there. You know, trying. You know, that's the that's what I think about. But they're like, no, it's not that. Then they go and explain to me the the, the penises together. So then I just, then I learned what that was. Well, I mean, it's then, a then play Jessica on that. went to HR. What? No, just headbutting. I, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Disgusting. Actually, I think it might have been you and Adam Kovic at last year's Christmas party. You guys told me what that was. Docking? Now that I think about it, yeah. Oh. So thank well, you. Well, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Wow, that just came to me. <laughs> it's educational. It is. So to speak. Did I go to last year's Christmas party? Yeah. Was... Obviously. You gave a seminar from what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in my TED talk. Yeah. <laughs> His yearly Christmas TED talk. <laughs> But Gavin's gonna get drunk and talk about something this year at the Christmas party. Let's find out what. <laughs> Just wrestled the mic away from Matt Holloman. This year is docking. That. You're done, Matt. <laughs> docking. <laughs> I'll do it next year. I'll do a seminar. Do it. Okay. You got you got a year to prepare. We just had our, our holiday party this past weekend. I want signups though. I don't want to just do it to the whole company. Mm. I want people there. You want them to want to be there. <laughs> yeah, they want yeah. to they want to learn. I'm not just gonna go <laughs> up and start <laughs> talking about docking in front of you know, like people people have kids and stuff. <laughs> well maybe their kids need to know. Well wait, wait, why are kids right. Well I don't know. There are some people here who are like real grown ups who don't want to hear me talk about I know, yeah. Yeah docking and things. Yeah. No, y Yvonne retired. She did. She, she was our grown-up. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I disappointed Yvonne so many times. Aww. She hated all of my Halloween costumes. <laughs> and by all, I mean the penis the costume one. I wore for three years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, she had to see it all the time. That's definitely back at the old, uh, the old studio down south. Yeah. I was sat in my... Ch I, I told this recently, actually. I was just sat in my chair working. And she walked by and she was like, Oh, what are you? And I swung around <laughs> on my chair, and the ball swung around, and she was just like, "Oh!" And just <laughs> walked up. Ah, <laughs> oh, oh, man! Let me Jesus. Think. I was walking out of the other building across the parking lot earlier today, and uh, as I walked out, I turned around and looked, and someone walked out of that building wearing a flaming hot Cheetos costume. That was Devin. And I didn't think twice about it. Yeah. Like I just saw the costume, like, "All right, they're yep. just they're just at work." That was Devin. It was Devin. He I don't know how he got that or. Where he found it, but he's been walking around and then he feels like it's appropriate because he's a snack guy here. So he feels like he should just wear snacks. Does he wear it outside of work? Uh, no, he just received it today and has just been wearing it at work. Uh, oh. I don't think he'll wear that outside. Oh. If he does, I'll probably have a chat with him. <laughs> I, so, I, feel like if, I feel like if you work in comedy or like sketch 
Yeah. <laughs> Same thing. Like long enough, like y- y- you're just expected to see yeah. like kind of strange. Like I was in a sketch troupe for years and my back seat was like wigs and costumes mm-hmm. and like a plastic skeleton. Like mm-hmm. there's just going to be, you're just going to see stuff like that yeah. and not bat an eye. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, just move, move that skeleton over and those yeah. like soiled wigs yeah. and like weird costumes, just slide them over. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Be careful. That's the good skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that, that's the hero one. We're, we can use that one for close-ups later. Yeah. That's right. I do love that about working here, though, is just that you never know what you're going to see and who you're going to run into as far as like, oh, that person's dressed up like a penis today. That's cool. You that's know? okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's okay with me. <laughs> we'll, do, we'll deal with that later. Yeah. Um, you know, or getting uncomfortably close to your coworkers. That's another thing I thought about today is that we, as a group, we have... I mean, I've been here for four years now, and I definitely have gotten very close to everybody, even if I didn't want to. It just kind of happens. <laughs> um, we've been physically close to each other now, mentally and emotionally. I had to fake kiss Blaine, you know, years ago on a short. It's just fake like, kiss him? Fake kiss him. So, like, it, it, we, we masked it because of the, the way the shot was. So we, like, connected foreheads and pretended like we were, mm. <laughs> You know, like, you kiss? <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, apparently Matt, after that, said that, hey, in the future, let's just have them really kiss because they, it didn't look great. It looked super well, fake. Well, yeah, that sounds shit. I mean, I've, <laughs> we've all kissed people on camera, haven't we? I have, Probably. but not not here at Rooster Teeth. We weren't, tech, we weren't playing characters. We weren't playing ourselves, so it would have worked. But we play ourselves now in these core sketches, so it would be weird to kiss your coworker. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But if we were playing characters, then I sure. disagree with you. <laughs> oh, okay. The, the RT Cinematic Universe. Got to yeah. keep it all straight. I mean, b- being someone who played themselves and kissed a man and a woman. That's right. Ah, that one. Yeah. That was one of the first things I saw at Rooster Teeth. I was like, damn. That's... Just go at it. Yeah. Just do it. <laughs> Just drink a bunch of coffee, and then you're set. Hmm. Well, then your partner definitely wants to get out of that kiss as fast as possible. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Like, I think everyone loves the smell of hot coffee. I mean, most people love the smell of hot coffee. Most I people sure love do. like drinking a hot coffee. Mm. But it's like if you smell cold coffee or like coffee on someone's breath or like stale coffee. It's Same like, with booze, isn't it? Disgusting. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Vile. Actually, most booze sucks to smell in the glass. I, I hate the smell of whiskey so much. Would you prefer it on someone's breath, though? <laughs> Okay. Come give grandma a kiss. No, it's just not good all around. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's I like feel, yeah. bars have that general like alcohol yeah. stench for like yeah. all everything that's been spilled over the years. Yep. <laughs> yep. <It's> disgusting. <laughs> Those bar rags that were once stark white now, just like a dingy brownish gray. Yeah. Ugh. yeah mm-hmm. And they, they don't worry, they they clean your glasses without with <laughs> yeah, that. Just, yeah. What do you have? Uh, nothing. Thank you. <laughs> nothing yeah. that that rag has yeah. ever touched. Uh, a bottle of beer that it was just opened and I watched you open it. That's it. That's what I want. Yeah. Years ago, I went to. Uh, I'm going to ruin bottles of beer for you. <gasps> Years ago, I went to uh, a party at Bernie's house, and uh, not good so far. Go ahead. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> and I asked him for a beer, and he got a beer, and I think he poured it the first one like in a glass. And I was like, okay, cool. Didn't pay attention. Finished my beer. Then I saw that he had got the the beer out of a an ice chest. I was like, oh, I'm just going to get the beer. Like I know where it is now. So I grabbed a beer out of the ice chest that was, you know, obviously in ice cold. I uh, took the bottle opener, popped the top off, and I looked at it, and the entire lip of it was just covered in rust. Ew. He had had those beers for so long, like just sitting in water, that the caps had just rusted, and that's why he had poured the first one into a glass. And uh, <laughs> could you... It's like Billy beer. Why did they stop making what? this in the 80s? <laughs> what? what the... So, yeah, uh, even a bottle of beer can be gross. I don't yeah. Know. Be careful yeah. with them. I don't even know if I would have opened it and poured it in a glass and drank it. Yeah, I don't know if I would have either. It had been that old, you know? <laughs> um, I, think I, think cool. he, I think he had even left it outside, like, in an <laughs> ice chest filled with stale water. Fun. For who knows how long. That's God. fun. Yeah. So <laughs> this beer is part of a promotional tie-in with Jim Carrey's The Mask. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Can't, can't be drinking this. <laughs> I would definitely drink mask beer. I would do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, release your inner Loki. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me. I saw this this story. It was a YouTube video. I think I saw over the weekend, where this this restaurant in Thailand. Uh, they like I, they make a bunch of stuff, whatever. But the thing they're known for is this one soup that they have. It's like their specialty, and apparently they've been serving this same bowl of soup for forty five years, 
they've, oh. they've left it like no. They, every yeah. night, like whatever, they, no. they make it in a big bowl and it like they start selling it throughout the day. And then as it gets low, they pour more shit into it. So it's like it's never been fully emptied and cleaned out. It's just the same bowl of soup that they've been stirring and heating up and selling for 45 years. And it sounds bad enough. But when you watch the video, it's like in this giant, I don't know, like maybe a wok or a pot mm-hmm. or something. Mm-hmm. And they're cooking it. And it looks like it's in a pedestal, like a special place. Like, oh, this must be like a... Like, they know, like, so they've been making this soup for 45 years. They must have, like, this place of honor dedicated for this soup. Mm-hmm. No, that's what has just spilled out from the bowl as they stir it. And it's, like, hardened and encrusted around it. <gasps> and it looks like a brown plastic container to hold uh, the soup in place. Oh, God. I love like, this. Let me see if I can find it. I love it. That's uh, so gross in every absolutely wonderful way. disgusting. But I say that. If I was there at that restaurant, I would eat that soup. I, I would too. Right. Why? Yeah. yeah. You'd have. To, I mean, you'd yeah. have to. Yeah. I mean, but think of how many sneezes have gone in it over the years, and it's and coughs. It's big. Yeah. But they probably served that already. <laughs> True. It's like when they take True. readings, they like core the ice in Antarctica, and you can see all the different layers, the from strata. Different years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. When they the, finally chisel those like stalagmites and stalactites of soup off the base of that. Th- Oh shit! Oh Damn. my god! Oh my god! Well, it's like uh, almost to the top. Yeah, there's a a lot of it's a crater soup <laughs> residue left over. It's like we're <laughs> I, uh, it's like we're Superman came to Earth. <laughs> yeah. Good you're, God! Okay, there, Kevin. Here's a a, a a wider shot. Oh no! Oh, that's nasty. Okay, that's no. I though. now I'm I'm I'm. Completely backpedaling on this, uh, I would eat the soup thing. That's you gotta eat the soup. Like you, anytime you go somewhere, it's like there's a weird thing. It's like, yeah, yeah, you can't get that anywhere else. Yeah, that's a health code violation in the U.S. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> rightfully yeah, so. It yeah, sure it's is. taking dumps and sandwiches. They're not I mean, serving a dump it. sandwich, what? dude. They're serving that a, looks like worse than a dump sandwich. They're serving a delicious soup that's so popular. They've had it on the menu for 45 years. The same soup. Yeah, that's good stuff. Um, I don't know how to process that. I'm trying to think of all the stuff, like all the oopsies that people have done over the years, and it's like <laughs> all the oopsies. Well, not like poos, but like <laughs> just like oh god, this is this, this is the 20 year old soup. Oops, just contempt. Oh well, and then 20 years later, they're still serving it. It's a. Uh, it's just out in the open. So when so when they go home at night, they obviously turn the flame down. So so whatever happens at the bottom of the pan overnight, because then they turn it back on in the morning, because they don't leave it hot all I'd, night. I'd, I don't they know. Should, you, you know what's in the bottom of that soup? Amelia Earhart's bones. <laughs> <The> very bottom <laughs> of that soup. They haven't dredged them out yet. Yeah. Like, right at the surely, bottom. Surely, at one point, a rat jumped in. And no one got it out. No one <laughs> knew. No one noticed. They might still be living down there. Without question. Yes, that's it's, true. It's, it's in the witness of protection program. <laughs> yeah. So it's in the bottom of a bowl of soup in some, Thailand. Some yeah. soup Atlantis that's just down there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you would not soup eat Atlantis. that. I would totally eat that soup. Oh. Hey, and even if like that really like scraped the bottom and gave you a good deep <laughs> serving of no, that I soup. would eat the soup the way they serve it. I okay. would not eat some just... some fucked up yeah. bottom scraping. The yeah. bottom of that is just like Vanta black. It's that thing yeah. that's just like n- absorbs all light. It's just yeah. the darkest substance on light earth. Light doesn't know what to do when it hits it. It's just like <laughs> oh, oh, I'm gonna go this way. This episode of the Receive Podcast is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Okay, so we all know VPN protects your privacy and security online, right? But I've got a TV watching pro tip that will take your TV watching game to the next level. You can use a VPN to unlock movies and shows that are only available in other countries. Uh, You see, ExpressVPN hides your IP address and lets you control where you want sites to think you're located. You can choose from almost 100 different countries, so just think about all the Netflix libraries you can go through. If you love anime, you can use ExpressVPN to access Japanese Netflix and be spirited away. But it's not just Netflix. ExpressVPN works with any streaming service, uh, Hulu, BBC iPlayer, YouTube, you name it. Using ExpressVPN is super easy. In just a few minutes, I was up and running, more secure, and now with a whole world of entertainment. There's hundreds of VPNs out there. The reason I use ExpressVPN to watch shows is it's ridiculously fast. There's never any buffering or lag. You can stream in HD with no problem. ExpressVPN is also compatible with all your devices, phones, media, consoles, smart TVs, and more. So you can watch what you want on the go or on the big screen, no matter where you are. If you visit expressvpn.com slash rooster now, you get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Support the show, watch what you want, and protect yourself at expressvpn.com slash rooster. Thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast. Oh, God. That, oh. No. 
I, I wonder if, I guess not, but it's like you see all the residue and the crud outside the bowl. You think that like the bowl has become more shallow over the years. Like there's crud <laughs> on the bottom now. Like they can't fit as much soup in yeah. as they used to. Yeah. <laughs> like soon yeah. it'll just be like one inch of soup. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all they can make. Be a little baby pool of soup. <laughs> so what would they do? Would they just pull out the residue, put it in a new bowl? Like know. a deeper bowl? I don't I, I'm I don't know if they have a backup plan. <laughs> We should we should start a soup. We that's a, that's we the title. Start that's the soup. title. There we got it. Yeah. <laughs> because the, the RTAA that came out on uh, YouTube this week was three soups too many. <gasps> what was that? Chris one? talking about getting too much soup and it was Barbara's oh. fault. <laughs> oh my God. We should start. We, we should start, start a soup, soup and we'll we'll eat it on next year's extra life. What would be in your soup? Um, it should be something simple, I think. Something without nugs that can rot. Mm, yeah. Like no meat lumps. That's smart. No like mushrooms and shit. Mm-hmm. Maybe just like like a bisque. A bisque. Yeah, a bisque. A bisque. What, isn't a, a tomato bisque cream based? Is it? Uh, it is. It's dairy. Yeah. There's, yeah. yeah. Oh, so maybe just a, a normal broth with nothing what in it. What about just tomato soup? There you go. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's... Tomato basil. Just keep that thing. Yeah. To keep it moving. Keep it moving. Yeah, that's the thing is like, I feel like someone always has to be stirring it. it Why can't don't we just be get just... one with like a, a bar at the bottom? That just... does the stirring yeah. automatically. Some fins. Hmm. Fins, yeah. 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 But it's like, the, I don't know if you ever took the like chemistry in high school. Like those are things that they put in the bottom of uh, flasks to stir them. It's like a mm. little magnetic. On the base. Right. Spins mm -hmm. it. And then, and then, yeah, then there's a magnet on the bottom of the beaker that like spins it around. Yeah. yeah. One of those. But big. So we're settled on tomato. Yeah, I would go with something brothy. <laughs> yeah, like I, I feel like uh, you run too much risk with that. You want you want to stop uh, almost more like yeah, like a foe. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but don't throw like the brisket right. and the. So you save that until right when you serve so it's just it. Exactly. Be broth and uh, like some sprouts, <laughs> <laughs> some uh, jalapenos. Yeah. Uh, cilantro. Cilantro. Some lime juice or hoisin sauce. So it's just a lot of seasoning and broth, so you can't have anything really substantial in there. And then you toss the meat in. Is there any in. juice well, that doesn't rot? Honey. Honey. <laughs> it's not a juice. <laughs> What's a juice, dude? I mean, you're asking a weird question. <laughs> What's a juice? Let me ask, let me ask Google. <laughs> what? Is there any juice? Well, the honey's not juice. Like, do what's, oranges what's eat a bunch of shit and then throw up into themselves <laughs> and then we get that out? So That's are you not... talking about fruit juice? See? <laughs> it's not so easy now, I mean, is it? No, juice is just or, like oh, stuff squeezed out. Like you don't squeeze bees for honey. Oh, I, mean, I guess you could. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the dangerous way to collect it. <laughs> the dangerous way. <laughs> Bee milk. <Yeah. laughs> bees throw up in each other's mouths. That's how they make honey. That's what's that? Yeah, they like, like uh, one like it's bee know, microgram of, yeah, they just throw up in like another bee's mouth and it throws up in another bee's mouth. So and do you think if you dressed as a bee with your mouth open, you could get it directly from the source. Or does it need to like go in the hive and harden to become honey? Like surely it comes out really thin. Yeah, I, I did beekeeping for a while. Oh, shit. Um, and yeah, it has to, you know, when it goes in to the hive, it has to cure for a long time. Because when it comes, like when it's right out of the bee's mouth, it has a high moisture content. It's very, like very liquidy. Wow. And so when they put it in there and they cap the honey, it stays in there and kind of cures for a little bit. And the moisture content leaves it. And that's actually why, like... Honey with high moisture content tends to spoil. So if you get like really low moisture content honey, uh, it won't ferment. Do the bees, and that's why it doesn't go bad. Do the bees stir it every night, or just... no, they cap it? They cap it. Okay. They put it in there. They let them. They flap their wings to create the airflow and like and a little bit of heat, and it evaporates the 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 liquid, the water in the honey. Well, why did you it. do bees? Was it your job? No, you just did I, it as a hobby. I did it as a hobby because a swarm of bees moved into my backyard. <laughs> A, a gang of street toughs, some street tough bees. It's like, were you forced into this hobby? I like the idea of that's why you take it, yeah. take a hobby or a job. It's like, oh, a bunch of people's taxes showed up. Like, oh, <laughs> now I'm an accountant. Now I'm a CPA. <laughs> yeah, they just started showing up. Yeah, no, the uh, uh, yeah, a, a swarm of bees uh, moved into my backyard, and you know, just debating at the, at the time, like, well, do we call like a professional come gather the swarm and like take it away? And then just started doing research, like, oh no, if we get a hive and we get the suits, we can transplant this hive into like an actual like wooden beehive and then just start beekeeping. And then we did. And it, yeah, it was, was so you great. just had That's, a big enough backyard to do that? Yeah. I mean, you, you, 
in like Austin City Limits, I think you can have up to two hives, and it has to. There's like some rules and regs. They have to. It has to be like ten feet away from a property line. But yeah, we just like set up a hive and uh, transplanted the bees <coughs> into it, and they started making honey, and it was delicious. It was. We actually, yeah. Oh yeah, you had, you had some. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just looked up City of Austin bee rules. <laughs> Chapter three, paragraph six, beekeeping. Let's hear um, it. Okay, here it is. It sounds bee fun. Beehive I... should not be located within ten feet of your property line. You know your shit. The number of colonies you are allowed to keep is determined by your property's acreage. Uh, depending on the location of your beehive, you may need to build a flyaway barrier, such as a wall fence or dense vegetation. The city encourages relocation of hives instead of destruction whenever possible. That's a whole deal. Yeah. Mm. So why'd you stop? Um, well, <laughs> uh, uh, my uh, girlfriend bro and I broke up, and so I moved out. Oh. And, and so they're no longer my bees. It's really great of you to Way to bring it up, ever. Gavin. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's quite, it's quite I mean, right. surely. It's more about personal struggles. Uh, yeah. Um, a... Surely you could have taken half the bees. Just like sitting them all the bees down individually and talking with them. Listen, <laughs> you just, uh, your mother you, and I you love you. you. Each of you stands on one side of the yard, and the ones that come to you go with you, and the come ones that me. go to her go with her. Come on, <laughs> come on, this way. You uh, you just see who can wear the biggest beard of bees, beard of bees. <laughs> and you can keep those. Well, that's what's uh, uh, crazy is like once a, a hive. So once a hive gets big enough, or like outgrows outgrows the hive, um, the queen that's inside will lay another queen egg. And then when that one hatches, the old queen takes half of the hive and swarms and flies off to find a new a new home. So, I mean, uh, ostensibly at some point, once the hive's big enough, you <coughs> could split it off and do another hive and, and take that away. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, only one, there's only one female, the queen, right? Yes. So when well, there's only one. No, there's only one queen. There are, uh, all the drones, all the worker bees are female, and all the male bees <coughs> are uh, uh, just, uh, they don't do anything. <laughs> they're they're only no seriously their only job is to mate with the queen, huh? They just and they don't fly. Go either. on, they tough just, life. <laughs> Interesting. Inter yeah, like yeah. The the all the um, sorry, all the worker bees are female. They go out and forage honey and or forage nectar and bring it back. And all the uh, uh, male bees are drones and they just sit inside the hive and just. How does the current queen appoint the next queen? By like laying the lazy. egg, because she can just she, the queen can decide what kind of egg she's <clears throat> going to lay. Interesting. Okay. So she goes like. Queen. I wonder how chemically that's different. What did, what do they do to the queen egg? I, how is that? How is that a conscious? How answer, is it like? They just, they, they, they just don't give. They just Andrew. don't give it a penis. What do there you want? it is. Yep. That's. <laughs> but all the females are the workers too. They give this one a little crown too. <laughs> <laughs> that way they know. They feed it royal jelly, which is like a a the, the like nurse bees that take care of the queen that like take care of the queen's egg. Feed it a special like. Oh, so does it become queen at that point, or is it still a special egg? It's still a special okay. egg, and then they so feed it no, a special like, diet. There's no like drones getting in on the royal jelly trying no. to queen up. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> trying to queen up. It's, it's fascinating stuff. <laughs> it is. It is very interesting. It, I I read like this B book, uh, showing the thickness of the book. Uh, it, it is a super <laughs> fat. It's bees are incredibly what? fascinating. Was it a novelization of the movie, or was the movie based on the book? <laughs> God damn it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this episode of the Receive Podcast is also brought to you by Calm. Does holiday stress keep you up at night? There's so many gifts to buy and meals to cook and family to entertain. It's time to put an end to those racing thoughts and head into the holidays with as well rested as possible. You should try Calm, the number one app for sleep and relaxation. It can really transform your nights, which means better days. Check out sleep stories, which are like bedtime stories for adults. They can help you fall into a deep, natural sleep in just minutes. Stories are narrated by iconic voices like LeVar Burton and Nick Offerman. I uh, love getting a good night's sleep, and Calm helps out in a lot of different ways. They have a great selection, so I can get the right kind of relaxation that I'm looking for. Right now, if you go to calm.com slash rooster, get a limited time offer of 40% off a Calm premium subscription. It includes hundreds of sleep stories and a ton of other content, like suing music from artists like Sam Smith, guided meditations, breathing exercises, and so much more. Over 60 million people use Calm. Join them today and get the sleep you need tonight. Calm is offering a special limited time promotion, 40% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash rooster. That's 40% off unlimited access to Calm's entire library and new content is added every week. Get started today at calm.com slash rooster. That's C-A-L-M dot com slash rooster. <laughs> I, I read this thing uh, fairly recently <clears throat> that bees won't 
build uh, whatever it is like the honeycomb mm -hmm. with it if you, there's a gap of only like six to eight millimeters and that's like the principle behind modern beekeeping why you use those those shelves and why yeah. they're spaced so tightly to each other it's like they're, they're they have that very specific amount of space so that they don't all just grow together yeah the, Lang the langstroth hive uh they they are spaced a specific distance apart but um, that's why actually bee, like for the most part, bees take care of their hive like really well. Like once we moved them in, we had to do very little work because they're, you know, they pretty much are self-sufficient. Um, but that you can get cross combing, which will like, they'll build comb a, instead of in diagonal lines, we'll kind of build it across the way and you have to like prevent that. And once you kind of correct that, they tend to build just like, they, they fill <coughs> out the, mm. fill out those, those slots just like, you know, Ein's Fi. Um, where do they shit? Probably while they're out, like foraging. <laughs> they don't shit Where in the hive. Do bees shit. There we go. <laughs> How do bumblebees poop? Is that what I asked? Do bees poop? I love this. That we're. I'm just asking questions and just getting answers. Love this. So what is bee poop? I mean, what? I'm not getting any answers here. Where? Do you where, think that's a different oh, delicacy? Wrote, where does bees shit? Where do? <laughs> where does bees shit? Hey right, man, where does bees shit? <laughs> Come on now. Can we have that on a shirt? <laughs> where does where bees does bees shit? shit? I have no idea. It doesn't. Uh, there's no easy answer. Because I mean, if the vomit's good, chances are no. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's see what it's like. You're trying to double dip. You can't get it from both ends. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is there any animal product that is feces? Oh, uh, you get civet coffee. That's dump. It's what they do is they it's like coffee. They feed dumped. coffee beans or like the coffee berry <clears throat> to a civet and they eat it and their body digests the entire thing except for the coffee bean and they shit out the coffee bean and then you can collect those coffee beans out of their poop and then make coffee out of that there's something dealing with beaver's poop that is something look at beaver poop look beaver poop yeah and something's <laughs> made out of that um forget what uh an i'm trying to think of like weird and just thinking about weird animal right? ambergris oh, is that yeah. uh yeah, oh. payday. Oh, beaver butts <laughs> emu emit goo used for vanilla flavoring. That's it. They secrete a goo called castorium. Mm. And I guess that's used in vanilla flavoring. Isn't that fun? Oh, good. I love vanilla. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't sound vegan to me. Mm. <laughs> that What's that stuff that's used for like varnish? That's It's like all smashed up bugs or something. What? what? For varnish? Like, what's that stuff? What's that shit? No, it wasn't. It wasn't varnish. It was like they made old records out of it. Vinyl? No, it was like before. It was uh, the one before that. Edison cylinder? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> is it shellac? Oh, shellac. Oh, is that from like bug shit or smashed up shit? Uh, I can't remember. It's something weird. Animal product. Uh, but I can't shellac is a resin secreted by the female lac bug. That sounds <laughs> fake. Uh, she lac. That can't be real. <laughs> that that can't be real. Uh, it's secreted by the female lac bug on trees in the forests of India and Thailand. So that's uh, poo. It is processed and sold as dry flakes and dissolved in alcohol to make liquid shellac. I learned. I didn't know. I that. learned. Huh. Yeah, it's crazy the the weird ways animal products are used that we don't realize. Everywhere. Yeah. Someone also wrote beaver anus glands makes raspberry <coughs> flavoring also. They got vanilla and raspberry? Man. Oh, man. <laughs> you know? There's, a, there's so just a swirl of the machine whole back there. Do, do, be, do beavers really like eating ass then? I mean. Damn. Jesus. <laughs> yep. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, maybe they just like the taste. <laughs> are, um, are Fig Newtons inside? Those are just like eggs. There's not poop. It's like made out of. Fig Newtons? Fig Newtons, like the, the, the stuff fig? inside. Fig. Figs, yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like the fruit? They're yeah. made out of wasps. That's it. Oh yeah, yes. there's like yeah, That's there's wasp I'm... wasp corpses yeah. In, yeah. in figs. In every so fig, it's not there's poop, a dead wasp. But it's bugs. Why does it get in the fig? Did y'all not know that? That's like how uh, figs get germinated. Like a wasp goes into them and gets trapped, and then yeah. like the fruit forms around it. In every yeah. fig? In every fig. Yeah. Every fig. It's really weird. Has a dissolved wasp in it. I didn't eat fig news <laughs> for a while, but then I was like, ah, eh, fuck it. A turkey in every oven, a wasp in every fig. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> That's oh, this. people are saying that even perfume. Yeah, from am ambergris, ambergris. Yeah, is uh, oh, whale yeah, yeah, whale yeah, vomit. That. It's crazy. I learned that from Futurama. 
That's oh yes, yes. I'm, I'm just learning that humans are pretty useless at producing anything. We really are. We that we got we nothing. We just produce more of ourselves. We we learned how to uh, to take. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're like the male yes. bees of the world. R- truly, <laughs> humanity is the male bees of uh, of the planet. Uh, you 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 mentioned Edison cylinders earlier. Have you ever seen that video <clears throat> of that guy showing off that Edison cylinder? Oh, and he no. breaks it. And he it. breaks it, like it breaks right in his hands. No. And then he just <laughs> he just screams, fuck! <laughs> no. <laughs> no! But now I need to yeah, see this. Yeah. I guess it's like a recording of Edison on an Edison cylinder showing off like, oh, look, you know, this is old technology, and it just like Dis- crumbles. Just disintegrates into <laughs> dust. Right. Like, irreplaceable. <laughs> an art of, like an antique, an artifact, gone. Just swept away. Is it because he was like nervous with the handling it? I don't and it know. just explodes. <laughs> just handling I feel like something that old and fragile is like any handling of any kind. Yeah. Why would you even yeah. like just pick th- it up? Just right. like I mean, was he a- about to play it? I don't remember the context. I'll Surely remember the outcome. Playing it would damage it. Edison cylinder breaks. So are you not allowed to eat figs? Oh, that's good. I don't know. I don't like figs typically. Let's look. Are figs vegan? Figs are not vegan yeah, because they are full they're... of dead wasps. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's exactly what it says. Direct and to the point. I Thank feel you. like that should be in massive letters on the packaging. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to our friends at the Wasp Council for uh, <laughs> making sure our dietary needs are met. I used to like stack figs for sale. I never knew there were wasps in the d- S- damn things. Stack figs. <laughs> stack figs for sale. <laughs> I was a fig stacker. <laughs> Oh, wait, okay, hold on. I was gonna see this video. He, so he must be about to play it because he's, he's got like the. Yeah, look at him shaking. Right he's there. nervous. Oh my god, I'd be. Yeah. He's probably squeezing it a little bit too hard. Jesus. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, no. Just gone. Oh. <laughs> and the guy next to him is like. Oh. And, oh, oh, and well. not my fault. And, and the guy looks like uh, uh, Daryl Hammond playing Sean Connery <laughs> <laughs> in, does, in that video. Actually. <laughs> It's amazing. With the the turtleneck and everything. (laughs) The video is so grainy and like Mm. shitty quality. It's amazing how quickly that stuff changes. Yeah. It's like, what was that, the 60s? No, that was only uh, the early 2000s. Early 2000s. What, because of video? Right. Or it was like, it was Mm -hmm. probably standard def and not HD. Everything looks so shitty. Filmed on a Sony Ericsson phone. (laughs) Just like looks terrible. Yeah. (laughs) You, You think we'll get to a point with that with like, 4K and 8K, where like in 20 or 30 years, Shit. we'll be like, can you believe we used to think that looked good? Probably. I, mean, I feel like we're kind of like that with games all the time. Yeah, but that's, you know, that's a, a <clears throat> rendered world as opposed to capturing the real world. Well, sure. I mean, all the stuff on film still looks good. But that's because it's celluloid. I mean, yeah. they can just re, they can just rescan and remaster that. You talk about like 4K oh, probably about like digital, video. yeah. Like something that I shot in 4K on my iPhone. Mm-hmm. Like if I shot something right now, or like the post show we did last week, which you should watch. Um, <laughs> like, is that is that going to hold up? Will people be able to watch that post show in twenty years and be like, "Oh, it still looks good"? Nah, I mean, phones still don't look great. They're all like full of motion blur and low lights, no good. I think they're still crap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in comparison to a real camera. True. Do you think, like, you know, in twenty years, when it's like, you know, get the new eighteen K? You know, Sony TV is that like? Will that you are used to asking like right. that'll be a thing? Right. Like the 18K TV. It's like, I just think where the, does it end? I where think, does it end? I yeah. think resolution just won't be a selling point at that point. You think it's like, like, after like 8K and maybe like 10K? I'll be like, okay, we no one cares about. I can see the person. That's I can high see resolution. The thing. It's like no yeah. one talks about the megapixels on a camera. No one talks about the resolution of like the grain of film. Because they're just, they're just like it's 35 mil. It doesn't really have resolution. But it has a, uh, like a grain amount. Yeah, and they do talk about that. Well, but it's not the selling point of the movie, is it? <laughs> <laughs> true. Yeah, true. that's true. Right. Yeah. It's only the, see... only the camera operator, like the DJ yeah, yeah. knows. Yeah, it's still important. Yeah. You got to like know what film stock to put in and stuff. But I, I just feel like there'll just be a new, I don't know, one of those like stupid dumb selling points that they just reinvent because it was like 120 hertz for a while, mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. between like all those between frame stuff, and then it became. Resolution again because HD came out. They'll just switch to something else. Yeah, this finds yeah. some new gimmick to try to sell you on. Yeah, yeah. some buzzword mm-hmm. stuff. I'm just glad that we got away from those fucking ugly ass curved TVs. <laughs> you really Wait, didn't like those. I hated those. What, what <clears throat> is the 
I, I my, my uncle has one. I, I don't like. What is the selling point of it? It's just like it's, it's curved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I never got it. I never understood. I hated those things. Maybe but, they'll curve the other way next time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a decreased angle of viewing. <laughs> You have to walk around oh, like, it. Yeah. It curves back. Okay, that's what I thought you meant. Oh, what no, did you? I was, no, I was like, instead of like horizontally, it'd be like vertical. Uh, like, I, I was picturing like a, like the other way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the other way. No, that's yeah. funny. I think he's asking like, what's the point of it being curved? Yeah, there's there's. there's I don't think just, there. I don't think there ever was. Yeah. One. Remember when HD Ready was a thing? It's like you were buying something on its ability to take HD signal, but it wasn't even full oh, HD. Right. It was like thirteen something by mm -hmm. seven twenty. Jeff, I think, bought a TV like that once years ago. He bought a TV that was an ED TV. It was like extended definition television. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. <laughs> extended. Uh, ED TV specification. Uh, I, all I remember is that he thought it was HD, but it turns out it wasn't. Uh, ED TV. Okay. ED TV formats are progressive scan 480p. <laughs> that was it. What? So it's just a 480p TV. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, yeah. It was terrible. Interesting. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, he was he was ripped off. Yeah, yeah. he was, uh, <laughs> it was like in the early days of HD TVs, and it was like, oh look, this one's much cheaper than those other ones for some reason. Yeah, it's, it's and the it's, definition is uh, extended. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I think sounds it's because, good. I think it's because it was 480p, but it was 16 by 9 instead of 4.3. Oh god! <laughs> so it was like nothing ever looked right on it. <laughs> 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 well, they, they were widescreen way before HD, though, wasn't they? Yeah, but not for like broadcast or television. Yeah, I remember. I, mean, I, I guess you could buy like white, what they call it widescreen versions of movies on DVD That's or true. VHS. Yeah. I remember that widescreen. Mm hmm. And then just, I guess, standard. Mm -hmm. Pan and scan? Y yeah. Both that screen. weird. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh -huh. But they called it standard. Yeah, like yes. they, they wanted to make it seem like, oh no, that's normal. Yes, that's, that, yeah, that's it's normal for your movie to all of a sudden in a scene mm -hmm. just go mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and find the other person in the shot. Then find the yeah, other the, person. Good. I mean, may, maybe as TV becomes more cinematic, then maybe TVs will get wider. Oh God, like anamorphic style TVs. What are we at now? We're at sixteen by nine. Get like a two point three five by one television. Yeah, why not? I guess because then you'd have pillar box 16 by 9, which is the majority of shit. I mean, would you rather have pillar boxed TV or a lesser box film? Yeah, I don't know. That's a tough one. These things are ju we're just they're just going to keep getting bigger and bigger until the point to the end where we're just going to become immersed into these movies. We'll just be inside of this giant TV. You think the thing. screens will physically be bigger? I mean, that's yeah, what, that's happening. What if it's just goggles? Like, what if it's I mean, just like yeah, a VR we're just going to be immersed on. into the movie at some point and just be a part of it in some form or fashion. And that's how you watch <laughs> movies. You're just like, I'm going to be woman number two, just like, always there. Like, I don't shit, know. I'm really nervous to go to the theater. I didn't memorize my lines. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to ruin it for everyone else. <laughs> yeah, you like pick when you buy the movie, like which yeah. character you want to be. Yeah. Like, oh, I was an extra. They got killed in the first three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> From the floor <laughs> in this room. <laughs> oh, shit. That'd be awesome. We just have to like guess which character will make it the furthest through the movie. I guess it, it, would, it would be smart for the theater, right? Like, because then you'd want to go back and rewatch it. Honestly, like, yes. I want to be. A, I want to be a better character. Absolutely. You wait till it's the a last great minute. Selling point. It would work well for movies like Hard, Hardcore Henry and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, POV it's, movie. Mm -hmm. It's like getting a seat in the front row of the theater. Mm -hmm. Like if you wait till the last minute, that's where you're gonna sit. If you wait till the last minute, you're gonna be an extra. You're gonna be. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're gonna have a <laughs> shitty role in the yeah. movie. <laughs> I think we just invented something. Yeah. <laughs> this episode of the Receive Podcast is also brought to you by Mercari. The holidays are a time for giving. That means a time for spending too. Lots of spending. So here's the thought. Why not add earning a little extra cash to your holiday plans by selling all that stuff you don't use on Mercari? It's easy, it'll help make space for all that new holiday haul. Mercari is the selling app that makes selling your stuff fast and easy. So here's what you do. You go through your home, find all that good stuff you just don't use, like that phone in the drawer, those jeans you only wore once, that old console you don't play anymore. You take a few pics, add a description, and boom, your item is connected to millions of buyers. It's super easy. Mercari even emails you a shipping label when it sells. Uh, the app has over 500,000 reviews on the App Store with an average 4.8 star rating, so why not give it a try? Everything ships too, so there are no awkward meetups with strangers, which, you know, it's a big plus for me. Uh, do not want to meet anybody, just want to ship it to them. Uh, you can even use Mercari to buy gifts too, because with millions of sellers, you never know what treasures you'll find. So clear out your closets, fill up the piggy bank on Mercari. That's M-E-R-C-A-R-I, Mercari, the selling app. 
Thanks to Mercari for sponsoring this episode of the Roosty Podcast. Uh, but yeah, I, I think a lot of services, like I think HBO is getting better about it. I think for a long time, <coughs> HBO would show movies, would show all movies in 16 by 9. Like they would cut off any 2.35 by 1 movie. They would think, crop it? Right. They would crop it in. But now they're finally starting to get better and some stuff is the appropriate aspect ratio where it's letterboxed. Yes. I, uh, I feel like I talked about this when I saw The Joker, but that was 16 by 9 for some reason. I'm oh. not sure if it was shot like that or whether they just projected it that way. I, when I watched it, it like TV. I watched it in the Warner Brothers app and it was 16 by 9. I watched the same, same here. Yeah. What was it for yeah. you? Oh, 16 by yeah. 9. Yeah, 16 by 9. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess yeah. I didn't I didn't notice because I was I watching was, it on I my just TV anyway. On the, yeah, it's a great way to watch it. Where did you watch it? The theater? Yeah, hmm. I ain't seen it. When hmm. you do, let us know. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, let us know your aspect ratio. <laughs> <laughs> text us. Make a group yeah, chat. Well, text this, us. This, this has been aspect ratio talk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> brought, to you, <laughs> brought to you by the Rooster Teeth Podcast. Everyone's favorite topic: yes. the technical specifications and details <laughs> of filmmaking. Yep. Yeah. Well, I actually wanted to bring this story up because I, I watched it uh, over the weekend. But did you guys hear about this? They're calling him a demonic child that was on an, an eight hour flight from Germany to <laughs> New Jersey. Of course it would be Germany. Yeah, well. To yeah. New Jersey. Yeah, to New Jersey. <laughs> to New the Jersey. two worst places on <laughs> earth. <laughs> I did not hear about this. There was this, there's this child, I guess he was like six or seven. From the moment that they got to their seats to them deboarding the plane, he was screaming. And I'm not just talking about just like, you know, crying. He was making like grunts and weird noises like <laughs> and 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 he was climbing on top of his seat. The only time that he was quiet was when he was allowed to run through the aisles and crawl into other people's seats, like peering through the, uh, both of the seats and stuff, looking at people, laughing in their faces. This one guy recorded a lot of footage. He then uh, edited it down to about four minutes. And it goes like hour one, hour two, hour three. And you can hear the screaming. And he was just like, they sound demonic. It was Insane. Does he have like Tourette's or like a mental illness? I don't know. There were a lot of comments on it uh, in regard to like if he has a condition, <clears throat> you know, maybe you should have thought about bringing him on the plane or is he just a lot of people were blaming the mother because she couldn't control him and let him run around the plane. Um, but it was he reminded me of the kid Damien from The <laughs> Omen. Uh, he even looked like him, had the crazy haircut and everything. But, <laughs> the little horns. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Um but that was te- like that's my I worst nightmare right. being I, on a night. And I'm sure you watched like the four minute cut down I video, and you're like, "This did. is terrible." I watched the entire thing. But it's like people had to sit through eight hours of that. Yes, mm. yes, it was I mean, awful. Just put on headphones. I should send you the video. The oh, screaming is it like they wouldn't help. Oh yeah, the screaming was awful. Mm. If you were in his vicinity. So. Where's that NyQuil? Can we get some? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Some of that uh, Jack Daniels branded <laughs> NyQuil. <laughs> The child is very sick. Very, please. I legitimately thought while watching it, though, I was like, there's a demon inside this kid, though. You religious? No, but I was raised Catholic, so yes, mm. it's somewhere deep inside nope, me. My belief yes. in demons. <laughs> 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 no, for I think it is. That's I won't watch that movie Hereditary for that reason. I don't know if you guys have you're so seen. Catholic? No, it's just that I was, I don't know. There's. I was raised Catholic. I am not religious, but... For some reason, like when someone's talking about demons, I'm like, "Yep, I believe that shit. I just, I just do believe it's there and real and it's awful." And you helped us make a show about spirits and ghosts and shit. You know, yeah, yes, I did. That night that the, the shit went down with Jeremy, that was awful for me. Remember, Have I you went talked out? about what you did that night. Yeah, no, I don't know if we've ever talked about it like on a podcast. I think Jeff had talked about it on Off Topic. <laughs> But I don't know if you guys have heard the story, but we were out in um, Louisiana. Gavin was on this shoot where <coughs> Jeremy got scratched. Oh, yeah. And um, we had to shut down production for about 30 minutes because it was weird. And then the medic also got uh, scratched later, too. Um, got scratched. Yes. Yeah, so hers, hers was a little weird, but Jeremy's was very confusing, honestly. And so it was lunchtime, and I decided to... Walk out to where the incident happened, and I was I was talking to 
whatever. And I was like, look, I have nothing to do with these people. I don't, I'm just, <laughs> I'm I just, just here work here. I just work here. I don't condone what these like motherfuckers are doing. <laughs> Please don't hurt me. Like, I don't want any of this bad juju. And then I walked back. So and you were then, selling all your friends out. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, we just um, had, because we, we were having, I mean, lunch at, in a night shoot is like Yeah, it was in the middle. We, we shot in the middle of the night. We, someone came in and was like, yeah, Jessica's out there like apologizing to all the ghosts. <laughs> She's cutting a deal with the demons <laughs> so that she gets like, saved. What is going on on this set? <laughs> yeah. I mean, A, it's all bollocks. <laughs> B, don't we want ghosts to show yes, up? Stop Michael, trying to get rid of the ghosts. Yeah, Michael got so mad at me. He, he started yelling at me. He was like, this is what we need. I'm like, wait a minute. Are we having an argument right now about your, you yelling at me because you need the ghosts to come out, but you don't believe in the ghosts in the first place? And like, like Ezra um, was, because uh, a bunch of the crew were freaking out. And they're like, well, I'm not going back out there. And Ezra was like, <laughs> we're not sending people out there, you know, if they feel unsafe. And, uh, and, for, and yeah. <laughs> Daniel, the director, was like, you serious? You, are you serious right now? Are you crazy? Because <laughs> like, that's exactly what we need. Right. Yeah. No, we, we can't film here anymore, guys. There might be a ghost. <laughs> I know. Daniel that's why I was so confused show. that everybody was like he so was mad. He was having none of it. And I, and I feel like everyone in the cast was like, roll the cameras. Get out there now. What are we doing? I having lunch hiding from ghosts. Let's go. People getting scratched. People getting scratched to this day. Jeremy doesn't understand what happened and he like I I gave everybody a ride uh, Back to the hotel at like 4 a.m. In the morning and Jeremy's in the back seat going over all possible uh, Other things that could have happened that given him that scratch because he could not believe that it might have been something else Supernatural. Yeah, we don't know what it was. Maybe I don't know who knows meanwhile you were out there like offering Jeremy up Yes, absolutely like I will give you him yes. if you spare Sacrifice. me Sacrifice these people don't sacrifice me. So it was a fun shoot fun time. That sounds great. Yeah, no it was great The people, human hunter was great. People are crazy People are nuts We had a very Louisiana <laughs> uh, crew on that set. Yes um, <laughs> I, can handle it. I know I was like, <laughs> it I was pretty to, tough. I'm just gonna walk out into the darkness and wait for <laughs> the crew to become sane again So we can keep working. No, we I yeah, we hired a um this was in a very uh, not well populated area of Louisiana, so we we hired a very interesting crew. Uh, How so. many alligator tooth earrings yeah. were present? <laughs> you're you're on, on the... you're on the right path, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, um, it's always interesting hiring crew that you don't necessarily know or you've never met I didn't or worked know with. Any of these people? Yeah, mm -mm. we're. I think we've talked about it before, but one time we were filming, I believe it was an immersion. It's one that we filmed in Australia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it was the immersion shoot where there was someone on the crew who insisted that they didn't have to eat, that they got all of their nutrition from looking at the sun, and that it's not crazy because there was only there was a 30 minute window at dawn and a 30 minute window at dusk. Those are the only times they could look at the sun and get their nutrition. But other than that, they didn't need anything. They would just stare at the they sun for the a sun. very long time. Mm -hmm. for, on, for, I think they only needed five minutes. Born on Krypton? <laughs> it was okay. like, okay, yeah. Oh, um, anyway, uh, woo, uh, they're, they're calling me over here. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go. I would have just watched that person all day <laughs> to like, figure like, out they when they were actually out? eaten. They ever pass out or fall no. or just. They're solar powered. I bet they had granola bars up their sleeves. <laughs> and like, so, like, I don't know. Cloudy day, couple of cloudy days. <laughs> How you doing that? Is that when they would eat a sandwich? <laughs> That's yeah. I don't. <laughs> Are those I, the days I, they I didn't, would eat. I, no, I don't think anybody was interested in digging anymore to find out. Which immersion was that? I think that was the Space Invader one. I could be I wrong. Don't I don't think I even knew about that. I could be wrong. What else did we film down there? We did the upside down one. I, I was not on set for that one, so it couldn't have been that. That was the only two, I think. Maybe it was a different thing we filmed there. I thought it was an immersion, but I don't hmm. know, we filmed a couple things there. <clears throat> I was working with uh, on a on a film a long time ago where Christian Bale was a part of this film, and I was a PA at the time. And anytime I would ask him for breakfast or lunch, like what do you want to eat, he would always just uh, drink orange juice. He didn't want any food. It was just orange juice all day and all night. And I just wondered how he. This was also during a break from Batman, so he was all like, he looked like Batman, super buff. I was like, how's he? What is he doing just on orange juice? I don't know what his tips and tricks were, but it's uh, orange juice. I guess it's orange juice. Is yeah. he on that like psycho Steve Jobs pancreas diet? 
I don't know. I know that he does really crazy, severe things for roles and with his body and the stuff. The machinist so. himself, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he looks unreal in The Machinist. Yeah. I, that, I, I mean... I think that was just coffee, cigarettes, and celery. I think, yeah, I thought it was an apple. <coughs> was it an apple? I okay, an I know apple. it was one of those very small... Was he nice? He was, he was very quiet. Um, but yeah, he was very respectful and kind. I've heard he's quite nice. I've heard that mm -hmm. his like outburst on Terminator was like quite out of character mm -hmm. for him. We've talked about that before. It's like you're ready to film and then something gets fucked up. Like we we're ready to <laughs> film over here and then it's like something gets fucked up. You're like, all right, yeah, whatever. We're not like channeling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you see did you Oscar see Joaquin, caliber performance? Joaquin Phoenix was on the late show. I forget with who. I don't know if it was Jimmy Fallon or whoever uh, it was. No and one they, can ever remember. I can't. There's so many late 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 shows. Which Jimmy was it? <laughs> yeah. Um, where the director, I guess, had given him some footage of Joaquin trying to get into character as the Joker, and so they're about to start a scene, but the DP and the director were whispering to each other, and he got very upset with them because they couldn't get that into was character. Fake, really. they, they, they later admitted that was, was it staged. really? Yeah. Because he like got so uncomfortable and was like, I'm so sorry, I guess I have to apologize for this? Yeah. I was like, no, that's they awful. They staged that. that Thank God, weird. because yeah. that would have been awful weird. to just like put him on blast like I think, that. I think I saw, I don't remember if it, I think I saw a tweet last year, or some time ago. Someone said, "You ever notice when you know someone says that they're you know going, they're a method actor, or they're like preparing for a role? They only ever say that when they're assholes. No one's ever like preparing for like a really optimistic, upbeat role, being a method actor by being super nice to everyone. Like you never hear yeah. that. You never yeah. hear right, that. Right? Exactly. It's just like, oh no, they're they're only an asshole because they're be, they're preparing for a role right now. It's not like you you never get the flip right. of that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In order to play this grandma, she baked dozens of cookies for the cast. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, you don't get that story. That's no. that's too that's too damn wholesome. Yeah. Yeah, you only get the you only get the negative side. No. Um I I read a fucked up story a few days ago. There's <laughs> <laughs> there's 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 this thing going on right now in Las Vegas that nobody can explain where there are people are finding pigeons all over the city. Wearing cowboy hats. Yes! <laughs> I, I was gonna guess something bird related, but I wasn't gonna guess cowboy hats. They don't know who's putting cowboy hats on the pigeons, but they're trying to find oh all my these goodness. pigeons <laughs> to get the cowboy hats That's off Look of at them. him! That's Look incredible. at him! Are they like glued on? I don't, I don't know. The article wasn't entirely clear on how they were attached. <laughs> but I would assume glue. Which is... Cruel. That's so cruel. Yeah, but it, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Wait, let's see that. I want to see that. Can I see that photo them. again? <laughs> oh, you got another one? There's another. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hell yeah. That one looks like a real oh, gent. That, oh, man. <laughs> next, ne next step, spurs. Obviously. Just get little spurs on Obviously, the. <laughs> yeah. Nobody should be gluing hats on no, a pigeon. Of yeah. course not. It's awful. That's a funny picture, but though. at the same time, okay. how, how do you even catch a pigeon? Uh, good question. Uh, they're, they're city pigeons, right? They probably come up to you for breadcrumbs while it's eating. You just put a little <laughs> a little hat on it. Yeah. Just Maybe it's like becoming known in the pigeon community. It's like, hey, you know about the guy? I'm going to go see him, gonna see what, him for yeah, my hat What if thing. the pigeons want this and they, yeah, they come to him? <laughs> the, I mean, I don't know. Who, who kn There's like my, pigeon microtransactions. Yeah, like the, yeah. They're paying to get yeah, hats so they yeah. can stand out. <laughs> yeah. I love that they're all different colors, too. I noticed that one was red, one was white. It's it's great. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things like, oh, that's cute. And I'm sure there's, you know, people, it's it's like, oh, uh, we found, scientists have found that these hats uh, completely mess up the equilibrium in the, like, pigeon's flight abilities. I bet it does. And I they're bet it like, makes it yeah. harder for them to eat, too, because, like, the worms yeah. see a big red hat coming. Or Absolutely. The worms. <laughs> the blind. <laughs> <laughs> That's shit. Uh, in the schoolyard uh, <laughs> understanding of what birds eat, all they eat is worms. <laughs> I, I completely am with you on that thought pattern of like, yes, birds eat worms. Yeah, just, just worms. Look at him. I love that photo. That this is town, such a great, classy photo. I'd frame that. This town ain't big enough for both <laughs> yes! of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. Well, speaking of, did you see the, we talked about this earlier, Gus, the, the penis fish? Oh, yeah. I, uh, Thought it was a joke at first, but um, it does not. I saw. Do we have I, any I, pictures of the like penis a bunch fish? of them got washed up? Yeah, I thought it was. <clears throat> I, I mean, thought it was. I thought they were really like dildos. Be, yes, because they that's what they they look. Have you seen the fish? unappetizing He's, dildo I think ever? Eric's I thought gonna, maybe it'd been in the ocean. Yes. Who knows? Maybe it got eroded. That's, a, that's a fish. So is it like a sea cucumber? How's that a fish? <laughs> 
<laughs> you are whispering. No, I just can't. <laughs> just... I don't understand. What, like, what makes something a fish? Like, where's the fish features of that? I want to know the same thing as you right now. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's uh, no. it's known as the fat innkeeper worm or the Chinese penis fish. I'm not making that up. <laughs> it's a species of marine spoon worm. So it's a worm. I guess. Not a knob fish. <laughs> Where's the mouth? Ooh. There are so many. Those, that, are, that, those are all That looks fishes. like something out of a horror movie. It really does. Truly. <laughs> It's, it's incredible. Also known as bird payday. Look at that. Look at just like, oh my god. <laughs> Let's saunter on over and eat the penis. <laughs> Are uh, they edible? I was just about to ask you how much you'd how much I could pay you for you to like. Would you eat not one? fish sushi? Deep throat one. Oh, god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> hey guys, you know what's yes. at the bottom of that forty-five-year-old soup? Uh, you guessed it, penis fish. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it in, gets the in, vanilla flavor? In first? Korea, they are eaten as food, often raw, with salt and sesame or gochujang. So they're just eating salted <laughs> cock? Someone salted cock. <laughs> uh, in, yeah, this, in Chinese cuisine, the worm is stir-fried with vegetables or dried and powdered and can be used as an umami enhancer. Oh, oh no. shit! Oh! oh. <laughs> Like it's become a vagina. Oh my god. <laughs> we now return you to this broadcast of Squirm. Yes. All right, guys. How much for us to import and feed you a knobfish? Well, I mean, if they eat it as food, <laughs> somebody's gotta like it, right? It's gotta take somebody's eating it with chopsticks, they got like little sides and yeah. shit set up there. That's, someone's into that. Absolutely. It's just, it's just messing right. it up in our minds because we just think a penis. I would eat it. When we see it. Um, I would I would totally eat that. I ate a plate of writhing tentacles when I was in Korea. Why wouldn't I eat that? It was alive? No, I think it's one of those things where they like squirt lemon juice on it and uh, they're like so all they just kind of go like squiggle. Yeah. Yeah. A bit clingy. A mm -hmm. little bit. Um, so yeah, why not? The, in, in keeping with my, if I'm in a foreign country and I see something weird, I'll eat it. Well, they have like those, I, I saw a video of a lady who was trying to eat a live <laughs> squid or live octopus. Oh, it was an yeah. octopus. Yeah, and just like, I cannot think of like of all of, of living animals that you would try to eat while it's still alive, octopus, goddamn bottom of the list. Absolutely. They are so strong. They are made of suckers. They like, are one of the the scariest and, animals to me. They they terrify me, and I have dreams sometimes about. But you wouldn't eat like live I, beef. Awful. Try, of, of, <laughs> of edible sized animals. Okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. Something that's like you know, um, like the penis fish that size. Uh huh. Um, that you could eat while it was still alive, like uh, octopus. Got it. I mean, just no. rock bottom. Is no. this the one you saw? Yes. Oh, like yeah. Of course. Right. Yeah. Dude, that's that's awful. I don't like that at all. Like, I mean, it, I feel like it's cruel. It's not really because I mean, animals get eaten live all the time, all sure. over the animal kingdom. But we have like the technology to <laughs> properly dispatch and <laughs> prepare <laughs> food. Yeah. Like, why eat it that way? Also, I mean. Also, octopus are supposed to be like super intelligent, right? Oh yeah, like, yeah. they're like, like aliens. Yeah, they're like they. Uh, I believe also if like if there's one in a zoo or one that's in captivity, that if they're going to perform surgery on them, they anesthetize anesthetize them, right? Like you, you, they can't just cut open an octopus. They have to yeah, make sure like, that it's it's under because they know that they, they can, can feel they can feel pain, it. right? Yeah. An octopus anesthesiologist <laughs> goes like ten years of medical school. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Putting an octopus to sleep. This is uh not killing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just putting, putting it, it under. Putting it under. Yeah, but yeah. They put a bunch of shit under. What, what? Like what? a lion they would put under. Do you think it's the same anesthesiologist that does a lion and an octopus? Well, I'm saying, like, they drank a ton of stuff before cutting it open. Right, but I think people normally don't think of like underwater fish. fish. In the same way. Yeah. Right. So if they were doing surgery on like a because shark or there's a whale, there's the difference they between cold and, and warm. Blooded. Well, then again, like a whale. I mean, you'd whatnot, put like you'd... a chameleon to sleep if you were operating on it, wouldn't you? That's cool. You'd blood. have to find it first. Because I'm sure. <laughs> Damn it, Andrew. That was good. That was good. Just, uh, uh, that was nurse, good. is it? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Not again. You got me thinking now. It's not that weird. Yeah. You can put a fish under. You just like put shit in the, in the water, don't you? Not literal shit? No, you just pour something in and it 
Just ether. Bloop. There, what is there that we stuff? go. It, it like will kill a fish too. It's like a way of like humanely killing a goldfish, or if it's got like the lumpy <laughs> head, you just you put the stuff in and just leave it in there. But I know what the stuff is. I can't <laughs> tell the story because I don't know what the, the shit stuff is. If you kill a fish with, if time or like an eight-year-old won't do the job <laughs> quick enough, you, you need this chemical. <laughs> <laughs> it's like how people fix. Like in, in, people have aquariums, they like fix a fin or something, or oh yeah, make courtesy of FishLab.com an article entitled "Quickly and Humanely Kill Your Beloved Pet Fish." <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I, I can't. Uh, what is it? How does it go? Let's see, uh, it, says, it says four steps: euthanize your. Oh, you have one option: euthanize your fish. How do you humanely kill a fish? Blah blah blah. Method one: Oh, the clove oil bath. That's it. Clove oil. Yeah, it does them in, mm -hmm. but I think it also puts them under. Step one, catch your fish. Step two, mix the clove oil. Step three, add the clove oil mixture. Step four, add a stronger dose. Oh yeah, it puts them to sleep, and then you add more. Oh, interesting. I don't know why it kills them. Because it's they can't breathe it, maybe? That just suffocates them? Mm -hmm. mm. But know. a certain amount will put them to sleep. Right. Well, I mean, a certain amount of anesthetic will kill and if you choke yourself out for a bit, you fall asleep. You choke yourself out too much, you die. Mm, that, Gus, I, I have that, no follow-up questions sense. to that uh, <laughs> that statement. Uh, yeah. I also read the other day, Gus, this one's for you, that plants know when they're being uh, chopped down, and they also mm. know when they're being eaten. What? And they make noises, too. What? Yeah. But I don't have a... plants are dead by the time you get them at the <clears throat> store. Exactly. Yes, I know this, but apparently it's a fact I read on the internet somewhere. So if you but they go, don't have a nervous system. So if you go to like a broccoli look, look farm and there's like a broccoli in the ground and I start eating it, it's going to make a noise? We can't hear it. Look mm. it up. Guys, that's why I'm transitioning my diet to complete sunlight. <laughs> I go out 30 minutes in the morning. And we go full morning. circle. Do vegetable <laughs> scream. <laughs> I, would, I would type in plants. Um... Or know when they're being eaten. Although not audible to the human ear, the secret voices of plants have revealed that cucumbers scream when they are sick and flowers whine when their leaves are cut. There's also evidence that plants can hear themselves being eaten. Say, that's but surely that's just like chemical reactions to being severed. Can you imagine being next to a cucumber that screams like, we know, you're just <laughs> sick, stop <laughs> screaming. <laughs> Can you imagine if you came to work and someone was sick and they, their response was just to scream, you're like, just, <laughs> go home. Yeah, you're, you're, fucking awful. you're fine. Do you think a pickle sounds different to a cucumber? Like It's like a different dialect. It's like yeah. uh, Brits yeah. and Americans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say it's like helium, like pickles just <laughs> I don't, I don't really believe that. It's not I mean, if it's screaming. Surely it's just like some frequency that's completely irrelevant right. of pain or suffering. What does a cucumber <laughs> scream sound like? What is this sort of popsicle know. stick laffy taffy joke format we're like <laughs> developing here? I don't think any of these are real. <laughs> these all seem fake. Cucumbers scream when they're sliced. Um, yep. I just. I don't, th it, I don't think we can hear it. Maybe it's just the sound of the knife pulverizing the skin. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. I don't believe you, Jessica. <laughs> I mean, I read it on the internet, so it's true. Okay. So. And I, I just, I also independently read it on the internet. <laughs> so it's also but do you think it's double true? true. I, I don't know. <laughs> but there are things, obviously, that we don't hear. There's, I mean, there are absolutely. things beyond our senses. Maybe a fig screams. But it's just the wasp. It's, it's the wasp. <laughs> Do wasps <laughs> scream? Uh, maybe, maybe like as they charge in a battle to sting you. Good riddance. Fuck them. Wasps? Do they yeah. serve any good purpose? No. Figs? They just hurt figs. me. I'm so. sure they I mean, that seems to be the one. But, I mean, figs are not that great. Let's be honest. Uh, if it, uh, yeah, they're not. I mean, a what Newton? Fruit? What are they good for? A Newton. That's yeah. it. What fruit would you be okay with wasps for? Orange? Figs. No, that's about right. <laughs> like, I want I want a fruit I don't care about to have wasps in it. <laughs> if there were wasps in oranges, I'd be like, oh, I don't know if I want to eat this now. Yeah, but what if oranges wouldn't exist without the wasp? Then I wouldn't be eating them, probably. <laughs> it's kind of gross. Yeah. Uh, 
it, it's, okay, I get, I get what you're saying. So, like, what fruit would I accept? What fruit do I like so much that I would accept a wasp being in it exactly. to continue eating? Uh. It? <laughs> and that, uh, I God, I do love a damn good clementine, a, a, uh, a honey crisp apple. Yeah, because you don't have to eat. I mean, you don't have to eat the wasp, right? I mean, can you find the wasp in the fig, or is it just? I think it's dissolved. Just dissolved. It's dissolved. Yeah. Then what's the problem? It's true. Exactly. That's why I still eat them. <laughs> 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 S suckers, I guess. <laughs> got him. Got him. More big news for Jessica. <laughs> I feel like is there a time lapse of that happening? That'd be awesome. A little probe camera shoved up a fig, watching it eat the wasp. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, it's Just, fascinating. Uh, um, no fig pollination and fig wasp life cycle. Maybe. How did these wasps not smarten up? <laughs> It's <laughs> fucking just dummy a wasps. Like all of life, thick as a brick. These damn wasps. I mean, that's that's a lot of the the animal kingdom. That's a lot of the world, right? Yeah, but evolution causes sort of ad adapting. So like they, surely they, figs they, will go extinct before other fruit because they must, wasps will evolve to not be eaten by it. But they must have some evolutionary advantage by doing this. Like the wasps, the must wasp also wants get something, it. right? Mm. No, they're, they're, I guess. Yeah, they, they, get a, they get a delicious fig tomb. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, what they, yeah. <laughs> that's their, what that's they their get? ultimate reward. So eventually, somewhere in Austin, I'll pick up a fig Newton and be like, I haven't tried these in a while. Maybe I like them now. Take a bite and be like, nope, and throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> throw, throw it at Jessica. And, and I just I never liked fig Newtons. I don't know. I think they're just kind of gross. The whole wasp, independent of yeah. the wasp discussion. I've just never been like a fig person. Yeah, I, I wouldn't eat a fig. I was You'd stack them, them but won't, won't I'll eat I'll stack them. them. I'll, I'll help people buy them, but <laughs> I will not partake. A fig monger? <laughs> fig stacker, fig, fig stacker. That's your theme song. I love that song. It's a good you. song. Thank you. Where were you when I worked in a supermarket? <laughs> <laughs> As you're walking, trotting along with your box of figs, fig stacker. <laughs> now he's doing apples. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a Mentos commercial, but with yes. just a big ass stack of figs. <laughs> It's a song I can actually sing on the podcast because it's my own. Can we license it from you? <laughs> yes, please. Twenty thousand dollars in needle drop. This podcast get... will get a copyright strike from Jessica personally. <laughs> no, she created it on the podcast, so it's property of the podcast now. No, I definitely oh, thought about yeah. that before. Yeah. <laughs> so dumb. What the fuck? <laughs> so, um, I, 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 I'm always fascinated by scams. And like the different angles that people make to try to like trick other people or or, or get money from people. Like I get phone calls all the time. Like, oh, you owe money to the IRS. You need to pay us with iTunes gift cards now. Like, no. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, of course. But uh, <laughs> Bitcoin. Oh, Bitcoin. I read. Yeah, I, I read a story in the Austin subreddit about a guy who got scammed because he supposedly got a call from the city of Austin energy program or the the utility company. They said that he was his business energy bill was overdue and he had to pay them over the phone via Bitcoin and he went and sent them like $3,000 in Bitcoin. Uh, he went to a Bitcoin ATM. Yeah, those are a thing them, apparently. Yep, sent I, did, them I didn't know that that was a thing. Hmm. Wow. You like just feed money into a machine. Yep, and it goes away. You can never get it back. Untraceable. But uh, I, I read this story about this, this Russian man who was scamming people. He was telling them that he could smuggle them into Finland and he would charge them $11,000 to illegally cross from Russia into Finland. But what he did was, he wasn't actually doing that. He built a fake Finnish border 15 miles away, inside of Russia still, <laughs> and would take these people and be like, all right, see there, that's the border. Cross <coughs> it and you're in Finland. And they would cross it and you just peace out with their money. That's and they're mental. That they're is still awful. Yeah, they're still 15 miles away from the border and they think they're in Finland. Wait a minute, there's no tulips here. <laughs> This is bullshit. That's like the embassy scams. Yeah, that's it's like the that's people awful. are building stuff for their scams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got like fake signs and this, this whole production just to scam people. I saw I saw a scam on Twitter the other day. One, one person messaged someone else saying, "Oh, I need to pay you back for this uh, these tickets or whatever." It's uh, like send me your PayPal email. Mm -hmm. And I guess there's a, 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 a people like searching Twitter for PayPal. And someone just made an account that looked identical to the person he was mm. talking to. Same avatar, like pretty similar username. 
and just was like, oh, here it is. Here's my email. And he paid the, that scammer's email, and then that person just deleted the account. And it's like, that is such an inventive oh way. Oh, my God. Yeah. Just, just like snipe transactions yeah. because it's public. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like, like so yeah. weird. It's like if, <laughs> the real life equivalent would be like, <coughs> if you and I were talking, and I owed you money, and I turned around for a second, and I turned back, and there was someone wearing a Gavin mask, yeah, <laughs> and with their hand out, yeah. be like, <laughs> yeah, or yeah. His, his pocket was just in front of mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought. I, I feel like with all these scams, they're scumbags, but it's like the ingenuity of it is fascinating. Mm-hmm. Like that's so, bloody clever. Whoever mm-hmm. came up with that again, so much work not to work. It's yeah. like, yeah, it's like it takes some like mm-hmm. level of creativity and mm-hmm. like, you know, ingenuity to just like get out of doing a nine to five. It's like, yeah. no, I'm going to scam. But it has to be like like this Russian guy who built a fake Finnish border. He's just out there like clunk, clunk, yeah. clunk, like be, like <laughs> manual labor, nailing, like, yeah. and, like infrastructure. He created roads. <laughs> he, ends up, <laughs> he ends up like building a really successful city that runs perfectly. <laughs> it's all a scam. <laughs> it's all a scam. Yeah. It's just like, ah. Uh. I'm just imagining like a really shit version of Finland with like, the N backwards on the sign for <laughs> Finland or something. Like it's a kid's lemonade stand. Yeah. 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 Wait, can an N be backwards? Yeah. Yeah. It goes down yeah, yeah. like instead oh. of the other way. Yeah. I think in <laughs> Cyrillic script it is the other way, isn't it? I don't know. I don't I think so. <laughs> I could be wrong. I, I, I have been known to be wrong occasionally <laughs> on the podcast after eleven years of uh of podcasting. No uh the chat says I owe you twenty bucks, but they're lying. Uh, fun fact, Finland sends Canada tulips every year for liberating them during World War II. Mm. Oh. There you go. I didn't realize uh, Canada liberated Finland. <clears throat> Again, I read it on the uh, internet, yeah, so it has it's to be true. true. Okay. That's the Netherlands, not Finland. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, chat's having an argument now. Have it, yeah. Uh-oh. The chat's on such a delay. Canada was not involved. <laughs> Kind of yeah, like, Finland like, at all. What? Uh, <laughs> oh no. I love this. Oh, so Grim is, is, is that Grimview's entrance music? Holy TV shit. Them. This combination of, of the chat and us yeah. just feeding yeah. it back to <laughs> hundreds of thousands of people <laughs> is a bad combination. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is how uh, this is how idiots get elected. <laughs> <sighs> so uh, if I want to get into bees, do you recommend it? Is it good? I I highly recommend it. You can so we captured a natural swarm. Uh, you can buy bees from like bee farms and stuff and it's like I think it's like a few hundred dollars to get like a queen and then like a hive and you can like bring it in Do they thing. ship the bees to you or do yeah. they just like tell the bees <laughs> fly out that way? Yeah, they give them like an Amazon slip and they like, you know, <laughs> they, just, they just shovel the bees in an uber <laughs> <laughs> And do that thing though like they go <laughs> on the back of the car till they'll have to go yeah. the two pat meaning All right, get out of here go doesn't uber have to have a uh, like a living passenger. You can't. Can you just shove your shit in an Uber and tell it to? I think you. If you call the Uber, you have to get in it. Like you can't call an Uber for someone else. That's not true. I what if so. I just write my Ubers name, before. but I say Jessica's stuff, <laughs> and your profile just, picture is just like a bag. My stuff. Then c- I. I don't know. Again, uh, I, know I work a be... nine to five. <laughs> I'm not working on these okay. scams. I know you have to be over eighteen. To use Uber, but if you don't have an age, hmm, like <laughs> if you don't have an age, or like a leaf blower <laughs> or something, <laughs> <laughs> the famously ageless leaf blowers we all know and love, famously ageless. Leaf um, okay. I mean, everything has an age, but you don't ID. You know, no, yeah. You know, carbon data leaf blower. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you ask. Great. Yes, some so, good uh, t- questions. To answer your Gavin. question, yes, they will ship bees to you in like uh, a crate if you've got like the the room for. I mean, <clears> yeah, you can. There's urban, and in fact, a lot of uh, bees bees really thrive uh, well, kind of in suburban areas and in city limits because um, typically people here do landscaping and like water their lawns well, and have like flowers and, like mm-hmm. year round. Mm-hmm. Um, as opposed to like you know out in the country where you know they kind of dictated by nature, so like bee or urban bee urban beekeeping really is really uh, thriving hmm. because of that. I have cats though; they probably die. 
I, the dog didn't take any interest in, in the bees, and they generally left each other alone. What you do so. is you put a little bee costume on the cat. We have one. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. It's totally cool. He was a bee for Halloween once. Yeah. There you go. You're set. Um, you talked about leaf blowers, and I read this thing several months ago that blew my mind. I, I cannot say if it's 100% true. Oh, no. They scream when you open them. <laughs> oh, Jesus. A, a 2011 study found that the amount of non-methane volatile organic compounds, the pollutants emitted by a leaf blower, operated for 30 minutes is comparable to the amount emitted by a Ford F-150 pickup driving from Texas to Alaska. <gasps> what? 30 minutes of a leaf blower? Correct. Apparently, gasoline-powered <laughs> leaf blowers are the most inefficient, horrible things ever made. Like, in a, that they just spew gasoline out and everywhere. And just blow leaves. What? Right. It's, uh, uh, let's see, uh... That's awful. In addition to the adverse health effects of carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides, hydrocarbons, and particles generated by the exhaust gas of gasoline-powered engines, leaf blowers pose problems related to dust raised by the powerful flow of air. Um, it picks up harmful substances like pesticides, mold, fecal matter. I hate everything about leaf blowers. The noise, the smell, what it and does. the point of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just the worst <laughs> invention ever. I, I use an electric one. Just I, I get so many fucking leaves in my yard, but so what? <laughs> I, I pick what? them up like I use a leaf blower to put them all in a big pile And then I pick up all the leaves and put them in why don't you want leaves? Because it just it just because I have a fucking dog with a furry face And if I don't Aww. pick the fucking leaves up, he comes in like a leaf monster like Aww. he doesn't have a face It's just leaves Aww, so cute. <laughs> yeah, it's like, just like scarecrow. I gotta get rid of the leaves in my yard. You have an electric one. Yeah. How old is it? Uh, about a year Oh yeah, not not nearly old enough. <laughs> Still a little baby. So li I have an electric one, but I used it to blow up a giant balloon. That's smart. I think I saw that. Yeah. The so yeah, you're talking about the gas powered ones emit, emit that much right. uh, uh, like, bad shit for right. the for the environment. Electric ones, we're fine. Well, because you're, you're you're using we're, the yeah. power plant already, so wherever that's polluting. So are they just like spewing gas out the front. And I guess just I mean exhaust right and they're if they're a gas so are they engine. like flammable like should you not use them by a flame if they're getting rid of that much exhaust I don't know uh, <laughs> but there's a lot of carbon there's probably a lot of like carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide there which mm. is not flammable yeah nah. let you want to find out yeah <laughs> turn turn a leaf blower into a flamethrower <laughs> see if we, we can instead of like using it as a weapon it's just like it harms the person holding it. <laughs> yeah, like, it doesn't it doesn't spew fire. It just causes an explosion. I mean I'm centered on the person I'm sure if you chucked a fine enough powder into a leaf blower, it'd be a flamethrower Like mm. flour or something. Mm hmm Yeah, well, you know, just, yeah over, over a flame. I, I uh, I think I smell a new slow-mo guys. I'll try <laughs> Hey Dan go. try <laughs> I'll be in this, yeah. I'll be Give it inside <laughs> yeah. Go stand by these bees I found a so I was curious you said you know, you could order bees, and I found a an article here about how to <coughs> ship live bees. Mm -hmm. And you can learn how to ship live bees and how to do it safely. It's like that they they make it two different ways. Learn how to ship live bees and how to do it safely. Yep. Can you freeze bees? No, they die. Well, yeah, they die. Because a lot of stuff you can like chill and it will just go to sleep. But a bee's not the same. I I don't think so. I think they. I think I don't think you can chill chill bees out. Uh, but you know, you know, you see when bee people are beekeeping, they're using little like smokers. They're like smoking the bees. That so what that is in effect doing. The reason it chills the bees out is because it is kicking in this like preternatural sense they have that there's like a forest fire, mm -hmm. and when that happens, their number one priority is to eat as much honey as they possibly can, and just gorge themselves on honey to pos to, to like move the hive? To, to move the hive. And oh. so when they eat that much honey, they get real. Sluggish, just like me. They get real <laughs> tired and like yeah. w w laden, honey laden, and uh, like and that's why big they old like Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. yeah. So they got to prepare to move the hive, but then they get too lazy to actually move it. It it, it just it like reorients their like brain to like pace. it's a combination of things. Like it reorients their brain to like eat a bunch of honey, but then it also like distracts them to like have a very specific purpose, mm -hmm. which is like to to gobble honey instead of. Sting whatever's oh, I uh, always thought the smoke just had like a direct effect on their energy But I, yeah, I, didn't, I never knew they were just like scarfing down all the hives honey. Yeah Crazy 
So you got to use the smoke and then get in there really fast. Otherwise, they're going to eat all the honey. Well, I mean, you know, for for a bee, that's like microscopic amounts of honey. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and it's like the munchies for bees. Yeah, exactly. So cool. Yeah. I'm happy to answer as many bee questions as you have. It's a bit right, This, really is, like, this, really is, the, has this been is the very RB podcast. Uh, <laughs> tune in, uh, send us all your bee related questions, and uh, we'll we'll do our best to answer them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that um when I was in Japan and I showed you the, the giant oh, wasp God, that I yeah. found, that was the same type of wasp that they filmed going into a beehive and killing like thirty thousand bees. Oh God! They yeah. would just like chomp them, just like rip their heads off. Be like, ah, ah, they're just getting all the bees. It's brutal. And the, the, the bees don't have any defense against it apart mm-hmm. from just like swarming it and heat overheating the wasp, mm-hmm. which they couldn't really do in time. Can you imagine thirty thousand? That's incredible. Yeah, it's like a Terminator. It was yeah. like in three hours, all thirty thousand bees were dead, and there was just like a stack of dead bees by one wasp. By three wasps. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think they were each taking a, a, yeah. a chill 10k. Yeah. <laughs> it's a gruesome video, but it's very fascinating. That's like in a video game when you go back to a starting area after you're all leveled up. And you're just these, like, like level one and two bees and shit. And you've got, all the <laughs> <laughs> you've got like all the end game shit. Yeah. You're just like stomping all over these. You're just using your super every right. 10 seconds. Just killing every bee in sight. Uh, the, the Someone in chat says the title should be the hive cast or the bee cast. Nah. Nah. Gus hates your idea. Wait, what did we say earlier? I had we a good one. We should start a soup. We should start a soup. Should, yeah. that, that should be it. I okay. feel like it's been way more bee-ish than soup-ish at this point. Well, should we talk about soup again? We have a little bit of time. Yeah, let's, do, do we have another soup story? Yeah, what's your favorite tell? soup, Gus? Um, I like... There's a Mexican soup called Menudo that I like a lot. It's pretty good. What's Ooh. in it? Uh, it's got like hominy, um, cow, the cow, cow stomach lining. Ah, uh, uh, it's really good. Tripa. Mariel's talked about the soup too. She's also Mexican. Do you know how to make it? <laughs> no, I don't know how to make it. <laughs> that was oh, tonight on Fun Facts. <laughs> Mariel's also talked about that. She's also Mexican. <laughs> we'll maybe, be right back. Maybe we're related. We should find out. <laughs> who Who is that information for? <laughs> <laughs> she's been she's been fucking with me recently like last night um <laughs> wonderful Andrew here had a, a housewarming party and I asked and he invited uh, some people including Mariel and I asked her where, where are you gonna come to Andrews and she's like oh I have the lesbians over tonight I was like oh that's fun she's like because I'm a lesbian <laughs> and I was like oh, okay yeah uh cool and so I see her in the morning I'm like how was your lesbian party last night she's like it was fine it was great you know and and i'm and i'm like you don't you don't need to tell me that the like that they're le- they're just people um <laughs> you know your fr- friends that are at your house and and i do know that you're a lesbian also she's like okay you know she's like, she, i don't know i don't know what her deal is so now i'm just referring to her as like the mexican lesbian around the office i'm gonna play board she's games okay on friday it. night with all the straight whites <laughs> 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 well, you know what else you can do on Friday? Uh, you can tune into our Rooster Teeth Holidays live stream. <laughs> Flawless segue. This Friday is at three o'clock. <laughs> Only on Rooster Teeth. Bring the straights. Bring the gays. <laughs> they can all this come is by. All fueled by Mario. Do, do, do you know a Mexican? Tell them to come on. <laughs> Oh, oh and, and the straight whites too. They're totally, they're, 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 they're totally fine. I'm just gonna have the marketing me? department going. Why did you plug it like that? What is this? They're, oh, gonna, they're gonna take this one little segment. <laughs> well, we told them <laughs> all different races, all different sexual orientations, whatever. Come watch the holiday live thing. It's Friday at three. Unbelievable. Well, you know. Uh, yeah, baby. <laughs> All right, we're done. You sure uh, you don't want to talk about your soup anymore? Are you sure? No, we're done. That's okay, it. all right, all right, all right. That was such a weird we'll see podcast. Later. Bye. <laughs> Everybody, thanks for watching this episode of the podcast. As always, there's some videos right here down below you can click on and watch. You should also click on that bell to get notified whenever there are new episodes uploaded so you can watch them. Uh, I want everyone to leave us a comment this week. Let us know, what's the oldest soup you would eat? Would you eat that 45-year-old soup? How old is too old for soup? Really, we want to know. Leave us a comment.